In the animal kingdom, there are a couple of species where the males help take care of the young. Penguins, for example, are dung beetles. But among humans, there are quite a few fathers who would prefer to put in a little more overtime at the office to avoid having to change diapers. Reluctant caretakers like these often shrug and say that it's just in our nature that men have traditionally hunted, while women have always stayed at home to look after the children. Sound chauvinistic? Well, it is. But there's also something to be said for environmental influences. Social flexibility has helped make us who we are. The male of the species is extremely flexible, especially when it comes to women. He can decide to spend his entire life with one, or live with two, or even four of them. But women can also choose to remain single or marry one or even several men. Human social behavior is extremely variable the world over. No other species is so flexible. Usually the rule is one species, one social system. However, one thing is also of equal importance to all the next generation. But this does not necessarily mean that the progenitor will be a good father. That depends on the social system and the personality of the individual involved. So in some situations, being a good father can increase an individual's reproductive success. Just as under different circumstances, passing on your genes might be best ensured by seeking out several partners. Social flexibility, doing what works best. Well, that pretty much sums up human behavior. In the animal kingdom, there are almost as many different social behaviors as there are species. Worms, for example, are only sociable when they're mating. Tiger cubs should really be kept away from their fathers, whereas among some species of monkey, being chosen to care for the young is an important status symbol. And there's one little mouse in Africa that has given researchers a lot to think about. Its social structures often seem, well, almost human. In the Namaqualand region of southern Africa, researchers pursuing a special rodent have to endure temperatures of over 40 degrees Celsius in the shade. The striped mice living in this semi-arid region exhibit varying social patterns. Sometimes they set off on their own. At others, they join together to form extended families. The most common constellation appears to be when two to four sisters pair up with a male from outside the family. Even after reaching maturity, male and female offspring spend several months living with their parents. This flexibility in family structure in an animal species is rare. Striped mice are mainly active during the day and they're very adaptable. After five years of field study, we know more about the striped mouse's natural behavior than any other species of mice. In the Guchap Nature Reserve in northwestern South Africa, Biologist Karsten Schradin from the University of Zurich has set up an observation post along a well-trodden mouse trail. For the international team of biologists, the field research isn't as easy as it looks. Curious mice often pay a visit to the station. The project requires hours of strenuous concentration in the searing heat. And in order to make valid observations about the rodents' family patterns, the biologists have to be able to identify individual mice. That means they first have to catch all of the animals in a group and mark them. The striped mice aren't exactly afraid of the traps and are easily lured by treats. But some of the more clever of them quickly learn to free themselves. And they're persistent. They keep on looking for what they came after. But in the end, they all get marked with the non-toxic dye. For the mice, the procedure is completely harmless. The markings allow researchers to figure out the web of relationships from a distance and find out who's snuggling up to who. 
They also study how long the adult offspring postpone starting families of their own in order to help raise siblings. It usually only takes a few hours of observation to assign the various roles within the family group. And even though the biologists maintain their distance, sometimes they become the subject of observation themselves. Another of the methods they employ is telemetry. This tracking tool allows the researchers to find out how far the individual family members travel in their search for food. The striped mouse lives under extreme environmental conditions, cold, damp winters, bountiful spring times, then hardly any food at all during the drought of the dry period. But the conditions don't just vary within a year. The striped mouse's environment can also vary from year to year. Their social flexibility allows them to adapt to a changing environment, and that's how they survive. When there's enough food, the striped mouse of the Namaqualand prefers to live communally. The male, his female partners and their offspring gather in the early morning hours to snuggle and warm up. Then it's time for everyone to hunt for food. The family members don't meet near the nest again until early evening. And they sometimes encounter other species, like the elephant shrew, for instance. And here again, the striped mice exhibit another advantage of communal living. They're better able to protect their food sources. But in times of scarcity, the striped mouse is also able to function as a loner. Fewer mice live in the same area, mostly just a few single mothers with their offspring. This kind of social flexibility has proved successful for the striped mouse. It's the most common mammal in all of southern Africa and has even managed to thrive in extreme desert environments like Namaqualand.